Easy map of Miss Easy Easy map of Miss Easy Easy map of Miss Easy Okay, so today we're going to continue learning about ratios, but this time we're going to be looking at tables and graphs that go with our ratios. And if you need to go back to my first video that kind of introduced ratios, feel free to go back and look at that one and then jump over here. Okay, and I thought once again in this video that easy, one of the easiest ways to show you some examples is by going over to Minecraft. Hey everyone, welcome to my house and here's my crafting table. And I'm wanting to make diamond swords, which take one stick and two diamonds. So let's use this as an example of a ratio and make a ratio table. All right, so I wanna show you that a ratio table can really just be like a simple input-output table like you've learned about in the past. And so to make one diamond sword, I just needed one stick, two diamonds, and now I can start thinking about if, what if I wanna make two diamond swords? What resources do I need to put in the crafting table? Okay, two sticks and four diamonds. And the way you know that it's following the correct ratio, so for this the ratio should be one to two, one stick for every two diamonds. And to know if it follows that ratio, you can just think about patterns. So I'm doubling this, I'm also doubling this. Okay, let's try another one. What if I wanna make three diamond swords? Okay, let's see. I would need three sticks. How many diamonds do I need? Yep, six. And I can look at a, a pattern here of I'm tripling times three and then times three from the original ratio. Okay, let's do one more. What about four diamond swords? Okay, you're catching on. I like starting with an easy ratio like this because it's really easy when you have something with a one in it and then it's just doubling. So it's really easy to also look across the row. There are gonna be some more complicated ones that we'll take a look at also. All right, so now we're gonna learn about how we can graph these ratios also. So last year I know you became familiar with taking an input-output table and then graphing it on a coordinate grid. Well, we can do the same thing, of course, for ratio tables. Okay, so let's start. I put that we have our sticks on the x-axis and our diamonds on the y-axis. And so then we can just start graphing. So we, if when we have one stick, how many diamonds do we have? Two, okay. Two sticks, four. Three sticks, six. And finally, four sticks is eight. Okay, and then what about if I make zero diamond swords? Yeah, then we have zero sticks, zero diamonds. So you're gonna notice that this goes through the origin, or zero comma zero, because it's a multiplicative pattern. Okay, and then we can just connect the dots. And that's also a really great way to keep a pattern going, because then I can start checking, oh, okay, five sticks, 10, diamonds, and I can keep that going, six, seven, eight, nine. You could check the pattern going on further and further. All right, I dug down pretty low and found some diamonds. And of course, I also found some coal. So I'm gonna use this as a ratio example and make a ratio table. All right, now we're gonna look at one from my last video, 
where I introduced ratios. So if you want to go back and look at that one and then come back, if you feel like you're not quite prepared for this, you can always go back and watch that one. Okay, so we have, I was out mining and I found four diamonds for every seven coal. So that's my ratio, so four to seven. Sometimes I like to jot this down as I'm working on a table, and that way I can always think back to my original ratio. Okay, so now I'm going to fill in a couple of blanks, and I want us to see if we can do the rest. Okay. So here we go. I want us to see if we can fill in these three missing pieces. So why don't you give this next one a try? So if I am bumping it up to eight, so that's times two, what do you think, what number should go there? Okay, we should double the coal also. So if I find eight diamonds, then if I'm following the same ratio, I'm gonna find 14 coal. Okay, then I gave you the opposite here, so I found 28 coal. What do you think I'm gonna find as far as the diamonds go if I follow the same ratio? All right, so there's probably a couple different ways you did this. Some of you noticed that this is doubling from 14 to 28, so let's double this one to 16. Some of you probably thought of it a little differently though. If you go back up to the original ratio, seven times four is 28, and four times four is 16, so good job. This particular ratio is a little bit more challenging than the last one because it, it doesn't seem to have a really easy way to jump between diamonds to coal since seven is not a multiple of four. So that's why I like going down the, the columns to help myself. Okay, now I've got 40 diamonds. What do you think in terms of coal? Oh, okay, so some of us might have noticed a really easy jump from four times 10, so seven times 10. All right, great job. <clears throat> All right, now I've got one more question for you on the diamonds and coal. So could I find 48 diamonds and 80 coal while keeping that same ratio of four to seven. So what do you think? Okay, so some of you are starting to think about the pattern. So we've got four times 12 and seven times 12, oh, you know what? No, we can't. What would we have to find to keep that same four to seven ratio? All right, seven times 12 is 84. You got it. All right, now let's start graphing our uh, diamonds to coal, our four to seven ratio. Okay, so I start by looking at that first row of my table and I see four diamonds and seven coal. So I'm just gonna put the dot right here in the middle between six and eight. I counted by twos so I could fit a little bit more into one graph. Okay, then when I had eight diamonds, I needed 14 coal. Okay, and when I had 16 diamonds, I needed 28. So I don't think I can fit that on here. 26, 28, maybe so. Right here, yep. All right, and then once again, if I have zero diamonds, 
Yep, zero coal. So this is also a multiplicative pattern, so we always want to go through the origin. And then we just connect. All right, so next I found some copper and some iron. So I want to make our last ratio table all about that. All right, here's our last one. So now we've got a ratio of eight to six. So I'm gonna write the ratio on the side just to remind myself. And so now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna have you fill in some of these blanks. So 16, 24, and 48. All right, I want you to pause the video, see if you can fill in these blanks to keep the ratio of eight to six. All right, let's check your work. So I'm noticing double and let's double. Okay, I'm noticing double again. So let's double this number. Okay, then I'm just gonna think about, okay, eight times what equals 48? Yep, times six. And six times six is, you got it, 36. I hope this video helps you in your math class or at home. See you next time.